Hey guys, it's Jordan up here at Mainly Tubs, and today I'm going to take a moment and discuss the startup procedure and chemical workings for a uh, freshwater chlorine system. I have a free flow mini with me here today. Uh, we're going to go over how to start it up, what to do, and all the proper uh, processes. So at the beginning, I want to start with a mention of this little outlet box. Now this is provided by the manufacturer for any of the 110 volt plug and play spas. It is specifically made to accept the GFI cord. So even if you've got an outside outlet there now, you're gonna need to have this installed. It's not very difficult, any electrician can do it. Some homeowners are comfortable doing it themselves. But this is a, a definite must. It's gonna protect your uh, connection from the elements. It's gonna protect the actual ground fault plug piece. And it's just, it's a mandatory thing. So you should have been given that already. Now, I'm gonna go over to the equipment area as we go to start up. On this model, your owner's manual along with your drain cap is going to be actually inside the spa. So you'll be able to retrieve that easily. We'll wanna make sure that we've got A, our plug on, and B, any modifications that would be needed to the system have been made. So we'll go ahead and walk over here real quick. Now, on on any of the free flow style models and a lot of the uh, 110 plug and play styles your drain is actually located kind of on the outside of the spa in the corner again we're just going to make sure that our cap is on snug also if we would have converted this into a 220 system uh, any spa that has the ability to go between a 110 or a 220 there are some needed changes inside this uh, pack panel on the inside of the, of the panel lid, it explains what's needed. Uh, there's a jumper wire that needs to be removed, occasionally a dip switch that has to be adjusted. Um, definitely that is something that you'll have to have done if you're gonna do 220. Occasionally we're able to have that uh, pre-converted for you, but in the event you need it done, any electrician's able to do it, it's very simple. So now that we've ensured that we have, our pack is good, we've got our cap on, let's go ahead and remove our filter which again, we're gonna remove the filter because we don't want any obstructions as we go to fill. We wanna make sure that any and all air bubbles leave the system. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put my hose down inside this housing. I always like to stick it down inside that hole to fill it from. And then we'll go ahead and turn it on and we'll get it filling. Now, I just plugged in our little mini friend here, so it starts up. Now, we of course left the filter out as we filled in order to prevent there being any air bubbles in the system. When it starts up, it is possible that there could be an air bubble remaining. I always like to start the unit up, let it run for a few moments by itself. It goes through its little programming startup modes. Uh, some people call it a tranquil cycle, and it'll give us a reading. So we just want to leave it alone and Make sure that we get our temp reading here as soon as all the probes are balanced and so on. Now, if for some reason you went to start it up and you were not getting any sort of water movement or water flow, you would want to probably hit your jet button just to try to cycle it a little bit more, um, you know, kind of get the water moving. If in the event you continuously have problems or if you forgot and didn't follow our recommendations, sticking the hose in the filter, uh, you may actually have to get the hose back out stick it down in the filter and run some water through those plumbing lines in order to get that air bubble out. So we're assuming that you've done everything though. So I'll move along. Now our system here, once it gets going, it's gonna give us a temperature readout. In with everything we've provided, there's gonna be a mainly tubs chemical guideline sheet. Now I understand that you also got an owner's manual and that some of the chemicals themselves have instructions on them. We want you to follow our chemical sheet as we find this to be the most appropriate use of the chemicals and works the best for our customers. So it gives you every breakdown. It gives you your chemical startup. It gives you what to do once a week. It gives you what to do once a month, every four to six months. Basically, the life of the spa and chemical use is covered on this page. We'll go ahead and get the system going. I'm gonna put in our filter, which again, self-explanatory. A lot of the systems will be a little different. With this, it just threads right in, so I'm just gonna push it down into the bottom. I'm gonna screw it in. Now, you don't wanna use um, a wrench or anything. I mean, this is really just hand tight. 
So, you know, don't feel as though you've got to get a pipe wrench on it or anything. Once I've got it in, I'll go ahead and just attach my little skimmer weir and I'm good to go. Now, I'm gonna have to establish a chlorine level at the beginning. So in here for our initial startups, we're adding a half an ounce to an ounce of our chlorinating granules. Very easy. And some people choose to measure it out by a teaspoon. Some people choose to measure it out by a tablespoon. You're basically just looking for a half an ounce to an ounce. Anytime you add any of the chemicals to the water, it's best to hit your jets, to get everything running, and put your all your chemicals directly into the filter area. We want you to cast them into the filter area so it has a good chance to, to pre-mix very well as it's being uh, sent out to the rest of the jets and the remaining water in the vessel. So now that we've done that, our pH and alkalinity are good, our hardness levels are good, and we've added our chlorine. Now we're just gonna let our unit heat up and we'll be ready to go. All right, guys, now we're gonna take a moment and we're actually gonna test the water. Um, I just went over our startup instructions, how to get everything going. We dip our test strip in the water, pull it out, then we just match it up to our chart, right? So our chlorine on here is gonna read really low. Now, if you're using a chlorine system, you're gonna be paying attention to the free chlorine. You're not gonna be paying attention to the bromine. Of course, vice versa if you're on bromine. For our alkalinity, it looks like we're a little bit low. We're about in the 40. For our pH, we're looking actually kind of right in the middle there. It's looking pretty good. And then our hardness levels, again, we're very fortunate to be right there in the good range. So we're not gonna have to make any, any adjustments here. And we're within the tolerable ranges across the board. All we needed was chlorine. So very easy. Um, I would say this is probably the typical results most homeowners are gonna get. So we've tested it. We know where we are. I'm gonna go over all these chemicals and what they do. Um, I'm gonna start off with one. So this is the uh, silver ion cartridge. We provide this on startup. It becomes a great tool and a useful uh, supplemental sanitation system. You're basically just putting this into the actual uh, skimmer weir. And this is using the power of silver and charcoal to help kill bacteria, to cut down on the amount of chemicals that you're gonna need to provide to it. So we like it, we've used it for many years. It's vastly popular in both the uh, freshwater chlorine systems as well as the freshwater salt systems. So I've got my little cartridge in this style. I'm going to put it right down inside my filter area because there's a little hole in there that will accept it. And it's just going to sit in there that easy. Now on something like this, um, you want every four months to change it. So you'll want to make sure that you have some of these on hand. Again, if you're just starting out, you're good for four months. Now this is for obviously on a free flow on some of the other models. There are different locations to install them inside the actual uh, filter housing, but typically that's that's basically where we're at. So our chemicals that we talked about already, of course, are freshwater chlorine, all right? This is just a granulated chlorine, um, you know, very pure. This is what you're gonna add on a regular basis to establish a chlorine level in the water and keep it sanitary. Um, when you're using these products, we don't recommend that you add it and then immediately get into it. Um, usually on our sheets, we want you to add it after you get out. So you just have to be careful whenever you're adding chemicals to the water. Always give it an hour or so to let everything mix before entering. But a freshwater chlorine uh, for sanitizer, very important. Our other options are, of course, the pH and alkalinity increaser. This is going to raise pH and alkalinity together on the test strip in the event that you're testing too low. Next, we have our pH and alkalinity down. Now, hand in hand, this lowers it if you're too high. Um, we typically see a lot of customers will have a lower pH on their test strips versus a higher, so don't be uh, panicked if you only see yourself having to, having to go one way or the other. Um, it's very common, and it's really just gonna be about your source water. Of course, our test strips that we talked about, this is gonna give us all our readings for our chlorine, bromine, alkalinity, pH, and hardness levels. We've got our MPS, chlorine-free oxidizer. So this is an, an oxygen shock. Um, it's not gonna establish a chlorine reading for you. Uh, this is not considered a sanitizer. 
This should be added as recommended on our chemical sheet into the water. Um, it's going to be a little booster, help burn off any impurities, helps burn off any extra bacteria. And again, use your chemical sheet, use as directed. It's been a very popular product for many years. Of course, we have our calcium hardness increaser. Uh, this is going to raise our calcium level, our hardness level, in the event that that is what our test strip had shown us. And then lastly, we have our instant filter cleaner along with a sprayer. So we recommend regular filter maintenance and cleanings. With this product, it allows you to pull the filter out, spray it down, allow it to sit on the filter for a little while. I believe the instructions are saying to let it sit for about five minutes, then spray it off really well. Now by really well, spray it off absolutely until you don't see any suds coming out because this stuff can cause foaming in the water and we don't want you to put a filter in and then have a big bubble bath. So after you're done cleaning it, spraying it off, just make sure that you're getting no more suds. That is everything in our startup kit that we're gonna provide initially. There are additional products available um, like foam down. There's additional products for uh, having oils in the water. There are scaling products all of those are considered as needed products and available at either Manly Tubbs East store on the website of course www.manlytubbs.com or you can give us a call here at our retail location of 207-883-6357 and we'll be happy to help you